As a professional driver, your health and ability to avoid downtime are important to maintaining your livelihood. There are three important factors in achieving a level of health that will keep you on the road, diet, exercise, and sleep. Fatigue. Research shows that driver fatigue may be a contributory factor in up to 20% of road accidents and up to one quarter of fatal and serious accidents. These types of crashes are about 50% more likely to result in death or serious injury as they tend to be high speed impacts because a driver who has fallen asleep cannot brake or swerve to avoid or reduce the impact. The primary causes of fatigue are not getting a full 7 to 8 hours of sleep, driving too long without a break, stress, drugs or medication, and hunger. Fatigue-related incidents are highest during the first hour of driving. This is caused by something known as sleep inertia, which affects short-term memory, reaction time, and cognitive functioning. Sleep. Sleep is a powerful regulator of appetite, energy, and weight. People who average 5 hours of sleep a night are more likely to become obese compared with those who sleep 7 to 8 hours. Blood sugar and energy levels are regulated by sleep, and can be disrupted if you do not get enough. When the brain is extremely sleep deprived, it will go to sleep involuntarily for a few seconds. This is known as microsleep and is extremely dangerous while driving. There are short term and long term effects to not getting enough sleep. Short term, daytime drowsiness, forgetfulness, anxiety, distractibility, decreased performance and alertness, memory and cognitive impairment. Long term, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, obesity, depression and other mood disorders, and poor quality of life. And poor quality of life. Measuring daytime sleepiness. The Epworth Sleepiness Scale is a self-administered questionnaire with eight questions. It provides a measure of a person's general level of daytime sleepiness. It has become the world standard for making this assessment. Understanding ESS score. A score of zero to 10 you are most likely getting enough sleep and are in the range of normal healthy adults. 11 to 14, mild sleepiness, steps should be taken to get more sleep. 15 to 17, moderate sleepiness, consulting your doctor is recommended. 18 or higher, severe sleepiness, it is extremely important to consult with your doctor and find treatment as soon as possible. Circadian rhythms, Often referred to as the body clock, the circadian rhythm is a 24-hour cycle that tells our bodies when to sleep and regulates many other physiological processes. This internal body clock is affected by environmental cues, like sunlight and temperature. When one's circadian rhythm is disrupted, sleeping and eating patterns can run amok, increasing chances of cardiovascular events, obesity, and neurological problems. You are less alert at night because your body prepares for sleep as it gets dark, normally around 9 p.m. You are least alert between 4 and 6 a.m. as your body is fighting to keep you asleep. Coincidentally, this is when the highest number of collisions occur. Your body begins to start waking up around 6 a.m. with peak levels of alertness between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Sleep Obstructors Certain activities, behaviors, and foods can create a barrier to getting a good night's sleep, including Alcohol. Although alcohol is a sedative that may put you to sleep, it doesn't allow you to sleep deeply. Caffeine. A stimulant that blocks sleep-inducing chemicals in the brain and increases adrenaline production. Effects can take 6 to 8 hours to wear off. Smoking. Also a stimulant that can keep you awake. It leads to lighter sleep and waking up early due to nicotine withdrawal. Exercise. In the evening, exercise delays the body's release of melatonin that helps the body fall asleep. It is recommended to exercise early in the morning if possible. Stress. People who are stressed often have less deep sleep. Off-duty hours. Hours of service regulations are designed to allow drivers to take breaks and get enough rest to prevent drowsy driving conditions. However, it is up to you to use the time wisely and make sure you get enough quality rest during off-duty hours. Plan in advance where you will stop for a break every few hours. Time breaks to be right before or after stops for fuel up and cargo inspection. Take a 20 to 40 minute nap during a break. Eat well balanced, healthy meals and exercise on breaks. Allow yourself some relaxing downtime before you try to sleep. 
To help relax before going to sleep, read a book or listen to the radio. Avoid watching TV or using a computer as the light from the screen inhibits the body's release of melatonin. Body weight. Commercial transport has the highest rate of obesity out of any profession at 39%. Obesity is when a person has accumulated so much body fat that it might have a negative effect on their health. If a person's body weight is at least 20% higher than it should be, he or she is considered obese. A way to determine this is by calculating your body mass index, a calculation done based on height and weight. The calculation doesn't take into account muscle mass and body frame, so for an exact BMI, consult your doctor. Another indicator of obesity to watch for is waist size. If waist size is greater than 40 inches for a man and 30 inches for a woman, you are at greater risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Diabetes Diabetes describes a group of metabolic diseases in which the person has high blood glucose, either because insulin production is inadequate or because the body's cells do not respond properly to insulin or both. The USA, with an estimated 23.7 million people, has the highest number of people with diabetes, followed by Mexico and Canada. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1. The body does not produce insulin. People will usually develop type 1 diabetes before their 40th year, often in early adulthood or teenage years. Only around 10% of diabetes cases are of this type. Patients will need to take insulin injections for the rest of their life. They must also ensure proper blood glucose levels by carrying out regular blood tests and following a special diet. Type 2 the body does not produce enough insulin for proper function or the cells in the body do not react to insulin. 90% of diabetes worldwide is of this type. Some people can control symptoms by losing weight, eating healthy and getting plenty of exercise while monitoring blood glucose levels. Unfortunately, type 2 diabetes will gradually get worse and patients will probably end up having to take insulin. Being overweight, physically inactive, and eating poorly all contribute to the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. The risk increases as a person gets older. As a driver with diabetes, the main concern is hypoglycemia or insulin shock, which causes disorientation and shakiness, a poor combination when driving. Later stages of diabetes can cause blindness, stroke, nerve damage, and kidney failure. Eating healthy. The easiest way to eat healthier is to stay away from junk foods, which are loaded with salt, sugar, and unhealthy fats. The World Health Organization makes the following recommendations. Eat roughly the same amount of calories that your body is using. A healthy weight is a balance between energy consumed and energy that is burnt off. Increased consumption of plant foods, particularly fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and nuts. Limit intake of fats and prefer less unhealthy unsaturated fats to saturated and trans fats. Limit the intake of sugar. Limit the intake of salt. The Canadian Food Guide recommends the following food servings for a 48-year-old male. 8 to 10 servings of vegetable and fruit, 8 servings of grain products, 2 servings of milk and alternatives, and 3 servings of meat and alternatives. Nutrition Labels Food sold in Canada and the United States will usually have a nutrition label. The label gives you information on serving size, calories, percent of daily value, and 13 core nutrients, which include fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, fiber, sugars, protein, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Several other nutrients are not required to be listed, but sometimes are. The following foods do not have a nutrition label. Fresh vegetables and fruit, raw meat and poultry, raw seafood, foods prepared or processed in store, foods that contain very few nutrients such as coffee, tea, herbs and spices, alcoholic beverages. Healthy eating on the road. It can be difficult to eat healthy while on the road. The following are some suggestions to help make healthy choices. Eat breakfast every day. Breakfast starts your metabolism and helps you wake up. Eat smaller meals throughout the day. Do not eat right before you go to bed. It can cause heartburn and keep you awake as your body processes the food. Choose water over soda. Eat fruits and vegetables as snacks. 
Avoid trans fats and saturated fats. Posture. It is important to maintain proper posture to prevent arthritis and back pain. Because professional drivers spend the majority of their time sitting, they are more susceptible to these kind of injuries. To maintain proper driving posture. Sit up with your back straight and shoulders back. The bottom of your lower back should touch the back of the seat. Distribute weight evenly over both hips. Bend your knees at right angles and keep them even with or slightly higher than your hips. Keep feet flat on the floor when possible. Exercise. Though all exercise is good, there are three types that are especially beneficial to drivers. Stretching. Because you are sitting for extended periods of time, it is important to stretch the back, neck, and legs. Stretching maintains normal ranges of motion of the joints in your body and reduces the risk of injury and muscle tension. When stretching, hold the stretch for 15 to 20 seconds. Gently apply and release pressure on muscles and do not bounce. Cardiovascular. Walking, jogging, and cycling are good for the heart and lungs. It helps in weight loss because it burns calories and reduces the risk of diabetes and high blood pressure. It helps relieve stress and will allow you to sleep better. Any activity that causes a sustained elevation in heart rate for 20 minutes will improve your cardiovascular system. Strength. Weight and resistance training. Important for strengthening muscles. For drivers, the muscles in the core of the body are the most important to strengthen. This includes your midsection and lower back, which are supporting your upper body while driving. When starting out, you can use your own body weight as resistance. Exercises, such as crunches and limb raises, can be done almost anywhere. As strength increases, weight can be added. Illness In 2011, the average Canadian working in the transportation and warehousing industry missed an average of 10.6 days a year due to illness or disability. In a driver's case, lost days mean lost money. Healthy adults usually get a cold or flu about two to four times a year. Though a cold may not knock you out completely like a flu, it still takes three to five days to battle the virus. Remember that some cold medications may cause drowsiness, so never drive while taking them. Cold and flu viruses are transferred from place to place by touch. If you touch a contaminated surface and then touch your eyes, nose, or mouth, you can obtain the virus. This means a virus can be passed by a truck's steering wheel, a phone, a light switch, or the ATM buttons. If you have a sneeze or cough due to illness, it is advised to do it in your sleeve or the crook of your elbow. Though coughing to your hands blocks some airborne spread of the virus, it concentrates the virus on your hands and will spread when objects are handled. For this reason, hand washing is an effective defense against contracting and spreading a virus. When should you wash your hands? After using the washroom. After blowing your nose. After coughing or sneezing into your hands. Before and after eating. After handling garbage or raw meat. The following are the CDC guidelines to proper hand washing. Wet hands with water. Apply hand wash. Lather and wash for at least 15 seconds. Rinse both sides of hands with water. Dry hands and shut off faucet with towel. Carry an alcoholic-based hand sanitizer in the cab of your truck for when water isn't available. If driving a vehicle that someone else has been using, clean their steering wheel and gear shift surfaces with disinfectant. Injuries Injuries also cause significant amount of lost time. Some of these injuries are caused by incorrect or dangerous use of equipment, such as chaining down or securing a load, pulling or lifting tarps, dropping the landing gear, lifting freight, getting in and out of the truck. There are three high-risk areas for a driver to be aware of. Injuries often occur when a driver enters and exits the cab. Use three points of contacts and use the step plates. Never jump from the cab. When climbing between the tractor and trailer, use three points of contact. Never jump from the back of the trailer. Use available step plates and hand holds. When lifting cargo or equipment, follow these steps. If an item is awkward or heavier than normal, use another person and team lift. Stand directly in front of the object with feet shoulder width apart. Squat down, bending at the hips and knees only. 
Keep good posture. Look straight ahead and keep your back straight, your chest out and your shoulders back. Slowly lift by straightening your hips and knees. Hold the load as close to the body as possible. Never attempt to lift it by bending forward. Never lift a heavy object over shoulder level. Avoid turning or twisting your body while lifting or holding a heavy object.